Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. If you are looking to create a 3D web game, what we're looking at today uh, is definitely among the best options out there. I'll actually go through what I think are the three best options for creating, let's say, Unity Scope or even Unreal Engine Scope games where the primary platform is the web. So what we're looking at, this is actually a game being made with one of these particular engines. It gives you an idea of what the actual capabilities are. This is a multiplayer shooter with robots, so I'm naturally going to appreciate that. And now I'm going to move on from it. So this is one of the games created using this engine. The other two engines I would consider the best options for complicated 3D games are as follows. First off, we've got Babylon JS. Now, technically, this isn't an engine, it's a framework, uh, and that's kind of a catch. So if you want to have uh, a full editing environment and a Unity-like editor, you are out of luck when it comes to Babylon JS. But other than that, it has incredible backing. Microsoft have put a lot of money behind this particular engine. It is fully open source, which isn't actually something I can say about the next two engines we're talking about. And uh, it is super capable in terms of what it can do in the browser. So if you're looking to create a 3D browser game, this is a very full functioning editor. It's just, again, there, uh, sorry, engine, but the editor aspect of it is very minimalistic. I do think that will change with time. The next one we've got is Cocos Creator. This is a client side app. That is, it is something that you download. I've covered it a number of times on the channel. It is, again, very Unity-like in terms of scope. It is based off the Cocos project. Uh, the Cocos 2D framework behind this is open source, but the editor itself is not. And this one is really popular in Asian markets, a little bit less so in the West. And then we're going to get to today's entry, and that is Play Canvas. Now, one of the reasons I'm talking about Play Canvas is because Play Canvas 2.5 was recently released. Uh, but another reason I'm talking about it is it's a damned cool engine, and I haven't talked about it in quite a while. So if you're looking to create a 3D game for the web and you want an all-in-one solution, Play Canvas might be exactly what you are looking for. Now, I do got to point out, again, so that game we just looked at, I think it was called RoboStorm. Uh, it is created using Play Canvas. You can see the editor in action right here. Uh, supports for uh, multiple different devices, so on. So it is cross-platform, so you can run it on Chromebooks or iPhones. Also, of course, desktop web browsers, and you can package those as games. Uh, the underlying engine itself is open source under the MIT license. The editor, unfortunately, is not. Uh, it's also being used for tools like this. So if you're creating a 3D project configurator for your application or your site, uh, this could be a good pickup for you. Uh, but yeah, let's go check out Play Canvas in action. So here we can see the launcher for it. You want to go ahead and create a new game. It's this simple. So come up here and we'll create a first person shooter and we'll call this Shooty. All right, and you can have it if you're paying, and here's where here's how they monetize it. If you want to do your development in private, you have to pay for their editor, or create your own editor as an option because the underlying framework is, of course, open source. So now we're going to see what Play Canvas looks like. So your project was just created, Now I'm going to go ahead and open that one up in the editor, and here you can see the editing environment. And it is literally just like working in something like Unity. So you want to select something, select it. You get the man maneuver or the... Uh, uh, the widgets could control its manipulation over here. You're going to see your scene graph is available over here. A variety of different uh, quick tools up here. Uh, your uh, version control is available and hooked up. Uh, we've got scene management, so you can have multiple different scenes here. You can go ahead and publish your game out here. You can publish it onto Play Canvas, or you can publish it out as a downloadable zip, so you can host it on your own website, or use some kind of a bundling tool. So if you want to deploy it on like an Android or uh, iOS app store, you can do so. Down here, you can see the things that make up your game world. Here, you can see a character controller. So let's just go ahead and uh, find that. So where did you go? Character controller. All right, snap. So here is your character controller in the world. It has a character controller applied to it. So what you're going to see over here, it is your typical component-based game engine. So this thing has a rigid body applied to it. It's got a collision applied to it. You can add multiple new components this way. And then you're going to notice down here, we have scripts applied to it. And this is your character controller. Your scripts themselves, you can go ahead and open these things up direct. Oops, that's not, that's the character controller. Let's actually open the character controller script. You notice here, all of these are JavaScript. Go ahead and open that one up. And you're going to see you get an integrated editing environment here as well. Um, and this is what it looks like in action. I do believe there is code completion. Yes, there is full co code completion available for your project as well. Uh, and you use a typical callback based system. It is all completely documented, by the way. So if you're looking for 
you know, a well-documented game engine, this fits that mold. You got um, the setups for working with this one, uh, controls and so on. Uh, and let's head on back over to your editor. So you're um, here, select this guy, uh, now right here. You're gonna notice again, it's just attached as a script. So if I wanna go ahead and add my own script to it, I can go here and you see here, you've got a variety of components built in out of the box, sprites and animated sprites. So you can create 2D games for this guy, by the way. Um, and you've got 3D models, uh, you've got audio sources and audio listeners, animations in there with animation tools available, a camera, lighting system, physics for collisions and rigid bodies, uh, Gaussian splat. So they actually have a project for doing Gaussian splat displays. Gaussian splats are ways of doing basically point clouds or scans of the real 3D world. A bit of a niche subject in this case. Uh, particle scripting and then their full UI system. The UI system is actually really cool and really well developed and it is actually its own open source project as well. So in a nutshell, that is a quick look at Play Canvas. I actually did a bowling tutorial with Play Canvas. It shows you how to uh, get up and going. It's a few years old at this point in time, so some of the editor is going to have changed. Uh, but the, the game logic and the way things work probably should stay exactly as they were. It's a very interesting project, one that I would highly recommend you checking out. Again, if you want to work in a JavaScript, or I think TypeScript, but don't quote me on that, and your primary platform is the web. So uh, you can obviously publish to web from things like Unity or Godot, uh, but again, a lot of times you've got very obfuscated and hard to debug code if you go that route. Whereas if you're developing for the web and only the web, you're probably better off actually using one of these dedicated platforms. And if you're working in 3D, once again, I have mentioned, I think what are the preeminent three options out there? Babylon JS, Cocos Creator, and Play Canvas. Those are the, the big three I can think of, especially if you want the full Unity-esque environment, you're gonna wanna go with either Play Canvas or Cocos Creator, which by the way, neither of those is a fully open source project. Let's get onto that now. So as you see, this guy is actually hosted up on GitHub. Uh, you can see here the release was 2.50, uh, just happened a couple days ago. Some of the updates that happened there, I'm not gonna really get into that because if you're already using it, you probably know. And if you've never heard of it, you don't really care what's changed. But this is a very actively developed framework. So there has been a lot of improvements over time. And they just had a pretty major release with the 2.50 release. In terms of the engine itself, so this is the underlying framework that the editor builds on top of. It is completely open source. It's available under the MIT license. So if you wanna build your own tooling on top of it, you have a full blown game engine available here. There are a ton of examples to get you up and going, by the way, so you can see uh, them right here. You can see the code over here that you need to do it and the details of like how to go about create it. By the way, I mentioned earlier on, there is this full UI editor for doing things like uh, buttons and scroll wheel uh, and moving things and various different text options, text localization, uh, and so on. So if you need to have a full UI library, hey, great news, that is included as well. And as you can see, great documentation for it. So uh, again, the underlying framework, just like with the Cocos Creator, the Cocos framework they use to build everything is open source, but the tooling or the editor is not. And that's what you ultimately end up paying for in this particular scenario. By the way, I did mention their user interface library is also completely open source. It's also under the MIT license. Uh, so even if you are not using this, if you're just looking for a UI framework for doing web development, PC UI is an option that's out there. It is a component-based user interface library, and that is also what their editor works with, but this is also completely open source. So that is a very cool aspect of this. So if you wanna learn more, it is available at playcanvas.com. There is again, pricing. Uh, so there is a free tier, but it is publicly hosted. If you want to make it so that it is private, it's going to be $15 a month. Or if you're an organization, it's $50 a person. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much the same-ish project. Uh, the thing is, again, public versus private. And here you're going to see 10 gigs versus one gig of storage versus 50 gigs of storage. I think it's a very straightforward and, and reasonable pricing structure. And again, if you're just playing around with it or you're willing to have your project public, uh, you can just use it completely for free if you're interested. And you're getting all of the same functionality. Once again, if you're willing to build your own tooling on top of it, the underlying game engine and UI framework are also completely open source projects under the MIT license. And again, Play Canvas just released 2.5. So I would argue that Play Canvas is the best game engine for 3D web development native to the web with two ties. <laughs> so uh, I would, if you're looking at something like that, if you're trying to develop specifically for the web using web technologies, you're gonna wanna check out either Play Canvas, Babylon JS, or Cocos Creator. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses and they're all very capable engines. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.